Hi, uh, we'll be discussing on uh, snoring and uh, sleep apnea today. Over this video, we are uh, trying to reach out to those people uh, and make them understand what sleep apnea means and enable them to identify if they are one of the uh, person who is uh, affected by the sleep apnea and uh, whether they have to seek medical attention. At the same time, we'll also try to explain the possible things they need to get evaluated and how we are going to go about the treatment of sleep apnea. Now first snoring. Snoring means a condition wherein the patient is having a noisy breathing when the patient is sleeping. Now why this noisy breathing happens is a simple uh, physics. Basically when we breathe the air enters through the nose, goes to the back of the throat and then to the windpipe. Now this is a cylindrical structure if we pull it. So this cylindrical structure when we breathe there is a negative pressure of air running through this and it creates a vibration on the walls of the tube. Now this vibration is what is perceived by other people as snoring. Now when snoring increases or when the severity of this vibration increases that leads to a condition which is called as sleep apnea. So sleep apnea means the condition wherein the patient or the person is having apneas more than allowed in a particular sleep. Now what is apnea? Apnea is a medical term which is used to define a absence of breathing. So simply put a person is struggling to breathe when he is sleeping is sleep apnea. Now why is the struggle to breathe? So as I mentioned the walls of the wind uh, airway uh, passage is vibrating. So when the severity increases there is a chance of partial or complete collapse leading to inability of air to enter the lung. So this leads to either hypopnea which means a partial reduction or it could be a apnea where there is a total shut off airway entry into the lung. So what happens when a person continues to have sleep apnea is the uh, scenario wherein the patient goes to sleep, our body gets enough time to rest. All the organs are in a peaceful uh, environment and they all get adequate rest. Now when the person has apneas, wherein the body is going into a condition where there is no air entry into the lung. Now this creates a condition in the body wherein there is low oxygen that is hypoxygenation. It is similar to having a patient uh, in lung conditions like if you are having a lung problem there is not much of oxygen entering into the body. So the same scenario occurs when the person is sleeping every single night. Now this puts the body into a stressful condition and this leads to unwanted consequences. Now what are the unwanted consequences? So these are either symptoms and signs. So symptom is what the patient perceives. Signs are the things which we doctors when we examine the patient identify. So simply to understand the symptoms which are seen in patients of sleep apnea which should guide the patient to seek medical advice is two. One is nocturnal symptoms and the other one is daytime symptoms. Nocturnal means those happening in the night. So what are the things that can happen? One, you can have obstructed breathing and this can be perceived by the partner as the snoring stopping for an intermittent uh, time and then the patient will have gasping and he'll start to snore again. That is witnessed apneas. Then second, we can identify the respiratory effort. The, there is strong respiratory effort when the patient is sleeping and associated with very loud snoring. That is second. Then we can have frequent awakening. The patient may wake up with a need for air or gasping. Then the patient may also have frequent nocturia. The patient may get up to uh, go past urine. And next is when we have a condition progress for longer time, the associated daytime symptoms will develop. Now the daytime symptoms are those when the patient wakes up, he will feel the lack of freshness from the sleep. Second, he will have a mild headache. Then he will also complain of irritability, lack of concentration, loss of memory and so on. Now these are the things which a patient can perceive. 
Now what happens in the other side, we also see that there are a lot of systemic consequences means the other organs are also affected by the sleep apnea. So the heart, the brain and the lungs get affected because of the continuous hypoxygenation that is lack of oxygen when you are sleeping. So associated cardiovascular problems may also develop without having a family history in this patient. Now these are the reasons why we need to evaluate a patient who is having loud snoring associated with the daytime symptoms which I mentioned. So the examination is done first physical examination. We check for the height, weight, BMI because we know BMI is something which is strongly associated with sleep apneas. Next we look into the local examination wherein we assess the upper airway. So the upper airway examination will be for the nose, the throat and the airway. So this will be done to ensure there are no static obstructions or the structural deviations or narrowing which can further aggravate the OSCs. Now these static obstructions need to be surgically corrected. So that is why we look for this when we are examining. Yeah, the other things after this examination is to ensure the patient in presentation is actually having sleep apnea or not. Now this can be done by doing something called as a sleep study or polysomnography. Now in the sleep study we assess lot of parameters since I mentioned the sleep apnea can affect other organs as well. Now in the polysomnography we will check for the heart, heart rate, the heart uh, any whether there is any uh, tachyarrhythmias or whether there is any bradyarrhythmias. Then we also check for respiratory pattern. Then we check for the brain EEG. Then we check for oxygen saturation. And we also ensure that the particular condition is because of obstructive event or whether it is a central event. So obstructive event means because of the airway obstruction, the patient is having apnea. Very rarely, sometimes the patient may develop apneas because of the central causes. That means the brain in itself is not sending the signal for the patient to breathe. So these can be picked up by using PSG or polysomnography, which is done overnight. The patient will be sleeping, the testing will be done and the next day morning the patient goes home. Now, this is accompanied with a second night sleep study wherein we do the same testing with the help of a machine which is called as CPAP. Now this is done in uh, our center as a protocol basically to understand whether the pre-existing condition that is the sleep uh, associated uh, breathing problem gets corrected with CPAP. Now having these two studies done guides us to help uh, the patient to understand whether he is having the problem and whether it can be corrected with the help of CPAP. Now, once the patient is identified to have sleep apnea, how do we go about the treatment? So it can be either treated medically, it can be treated surgically. But above all this, the patient needs to also focus on weight reduction and exercise to increase the muscle tone. Now the backbone for the treatment is weight loss and uh, the weight uh, exercises. Uh, irrespective of uh, the treatment choices we give to the patient. Now for medical treatment, we often go for gold standard treatment of CPAP therapy or the continuous pressure airway therapy wherein we give a patient a machine which is going to deliver air into this uh, upper airway and make sure the airway is not collapsing. Hence the air will for sure go into the lungs and thereby we are able to tackle the apneas which are happening because of this obstructive causes. Now the second is for those patients who are having static problems wherein we have a severely deviated nose or we are having a very narrow uh, palatal area or we have a very large tongue or a floppy epiglottis. These are the cases who along with CPAP might require surgical correction to make sure the airway delivery is happening correctly. And in those patients who are having CPAP tolerance issue, like we give the CPAP and the patient says he cannot tolerate, then we look into possible options of surgical corrections for the snoring and sleep apnea, wherein we do the little alteration of the palate or we can reduce the bulk of tongue. These are the other surgical options which we give to those patients who are not tolerating CPAP. Now, after this surgical treatment, 
the patient also has to ensure he maintains the weight uh, to the particular uh, allowed limits and he does not again start gaining weight. This is to ensure the long term results of the surgery or the CPAP. Hence, the patient will be having a correction of the obstructive sleep apnea.